Dave's mail. I got some a nice set of pictures. There's some pictures of the last contest. I don't have any way of running them on my computer yet. Maybe when Mike Costello or Elliot's here. This is from Dean. I'm going to hope I say his name right. Luzard. Luzarder. Anyway, look at these nice size. Uh, look at the size of these. Isn't that? They're like 8.5 by 11. I love starting off a day with uh, some nice pictures. I can hang these on a wall. I love having pictures on my wall. If you walk around this shop, there are a thousand pictures on a wall. I love them all. And then you don't have to paint your shop. Kind of a win-win situation. And this should look at the Baltimore Oriole hat. Love it. Anyway, he took these out of the last circle burner contest. And hey Dean, I really appreciate it. I will definitely send you some video or uh, something that may uh, inspire you, or maybe we'll see you Sunday at the contest. This last of our circle burner contest is coming up Sunday and it's supposed to be not good weather, but Hey, I really appreciate the pictures, and we'll be hanging these up in the shop. Now, the last time we worked in the shop, for any length of time, we put these wings together with a little bit of an experiment. We had glassed one side and then gone around the other side and taped the glass in place. And on this one, we tried something a little tricky, too. We put Teflon tape down on the edge. And you can see now, I'm just, let me show this up on a macro lens, you can see how much we've saved by doing this. Maybe I need to set up a macro lens. This is, this is really one of the good tricks for doing foam wings. And I'm always looking for some way to make this easier or lighter or better. And I want to get these all prepped. Wes is busy, he's out actually get, doing some stuff for his mom. So I'm going to take the bull by the horns here and get these two wing panels sanded out because tomorrow is our contest and I want to, if possible, hand these off to Noel or Jim Damarell so they can get them cored. These have to have that lightweight coring operation. So hopefully we'll get this done, but I'm going to put a couple of, a couple of tips for sanding these foam wings. This, this is something that you, it can be very easy, it can be very hard. It can take a long time, it can take a minimum time, and having some some ideas on how to do it will just really save you a lot of time. We're using this experimental new technology to try to make up a both lighter and stronger wing at the same time. One of the things that we did was, when we did the second side, we had put this Teflon tape on, and you can see how much epoxy wound up just sitting on it. Now what I need to see, and of course I don't know if this is going to be practical yet until I do it, is pull up some of the tape and just very carefully a lot of it is stuck down even though it's not going to really stick to that Teflon the idea is when you do this is to minimize the sanding to make it as convenient or easy or both and what I think we'll be able to do here is just slip right along the edge here This was the idea I had in mind is that at some point in time, if I just score this, I could then pick this very carefully. Just what it's going to do is just tear. Now, this seam here you almost can't feel. I mean, that's going to need just two or three swipes with 220. This gives us, I would say this probably, say, oops, there goes the tape. We've got to make sure we don't do that. Let me get back and see if the tape is not as strong as I thought it was. Maybe we need two layers of it. But that's basically the thing that we try. And this tape is, we really should put two layers of it down. See, that's part of what you learn when you do little experiments like this. But once this is all, we pull the tape up, we'll just run the blade on that again. I see what's happening. When it goes through a big glob, it's it's too strong for the tape. Okay, now we can pull it right up. And considering that we're saving about two hours of sanding, this may be worth it. 
little piece went over the edge. The, the, the tape needs to be double layered. I can see that the tape, and that's a, of course that's how you learn, tape is just a little bit on the thin side. Trailing edge is going to be any easier. And I just think the trick here would have been to just put two layers of just two layers of tape so there's no chance it's going to tear when I go through this. It's easy just to slice it in this case. Once it's started, then it just seems to go. And you can see the technique just peels right back. And except for the fact that tape tearing. So what the trick is going to be the next one is put two layers of tape or just stronger tape. Just anything that hangs out over the edge. Because there's a little bit of resin on it, it usually makes a perfectly clean cut. One swipe at a sanding block. And once I get all this peripheral stuff off, I like to sand fiberglass outside whenever possible because I don't like to breathe the dust in the house. And I think it's really important in my case because Karen has so many breathing related problems. We really try to minimize the dust, the chemicals, and everything. And by sanding outside, it just makes it go really nice and quick. You just let the, the breeze blow it away. And that's about all it takes to get a nice workable edge. Now the big, the flat sides we're going to do outside with sanding blocks. What our plan is, Les had made a plan that we wanted to put a, uh, a little dissertation about how to set up your sanding blocks for the, the building season. And since we have probably a hundred of them, we're going to try to do it all in one session, put some notes and some tricks and things out on a video. But for right now, we'll just use up the old blocks we have because we want to get these wings done as soon as possible. In fact, we want to drop them off tomorrow. Thing about working, we were in the middle of a hurricane here. 220 paper, a small block. By working outside, I don't have to breathe any of this stuff. And that dust is not your friend. Normally I would spend probably an hour on each panel. I think I'm going to spend more like five minutes on each panel. So making those little masks and things, I think it's definitely going to be... Look how nice the, the leading edge is sanding out in a matter of minutes. When you look at the sandpaper and you see chewing gum, you know the epoxy should still be dry. West systems usually 24 hours later. Piece of cake, it powders, powders right off like Brodac dope. And the weather report for our contest tomorrow is rain, rain, go away, but we want to transfer these wings off, or we're going to have to make a special trip up to John's next week. Boy, it doesn't get a, it doesn't get a lot easier than that. That is really nice. That worked out. That's one of the best things we've done so far. Now, we know once we core this out with those special four point cores that we're going to have panels that weigh around three ounces as opposed to four and a half ounces or four ounces. So we've got a real good shot at really having some world class experimental type foam wings. And these will be for our Rojet 40 ship. Tape Karen was working on this project, priming, bin zinzering, going crazy. We want to make a, a full gold finish on this. And you get, get some idea how much material and paint and time she spent doing this, but 
This looks like this is going to be quite a nice piece. It's going to go in uh, what was her daughter Stacy's bedroom. And maybe later today or when she gets back, I don't know. We're going we're gonna to definitely see how this looks when it's done. Well, as predicted, it's not a great day, but uh, certain, the rain has stopped. It was raining by me, Ruben. Was it raining by you? The leaves are turning yellow. And they're ready to, uh, to start. Because this will be the final contest of the year either way, I guess. Are they all repaired, Jim? Yes, Mr. All back in one piece? Well, two pieces. I broke the little tip off of this here rudder. Last night, I slipped the fuel line off here and I cracked this and I glued that up and this morning hit this with my foot and broke a little piece off my front rudder. But otherwise than that... So you are 40? Yeah. Oh my here's, God. Because here's a picture of me. I was already driving cars when you were born. <laughs> Let's see. Here's a picture of me in 1958. Oh yeah, that's you. Which guy is Windy and I which guy that. is Dan? Dan that's, is taking a snooze. That's freaking me to a That's tea. cool. Is that a real cover? It's a, yeah, it's a nice copy of a cover from Florida. Wow, Models. that's nice. But that's hysterical. They keep telling I'm on a cover. I'm like, I ain't on no cover. Forget it. Oh, okay. Uh, I bought four toys to hammer. When you made the, uh, the muffler for the lace maker, didn't you use all these similar things? I stamped that out. I made a mold and stamped those. Oh, okay. I can make those, you know. This is pretty, they do this in motorcycling, too. They do this, oh, uh, they make a tank and... Here you go. Why don't you take that? I don't know, is that the, if that's the latest one or not, but you can call them up and tell them you want all the catalogs and they're all free. Because they have, like, technical books, electrical, and yeah, just got, get them all. I got, I got this. But I ain't got this, this latest thing here. Okay. Yeah, duh, duh, take that. Advanced seat metal fabrication. Yeah. She's always, uh... Right That's now. almost like choppers on TV where they're fabricating oh. tanks and all kind of cool stuff. That's pretty neat stuff. Yeah, I'm usually buying books out of there on engines and, um... Yeah. Really cool stuff. Oh, that's right. One of them is, uh, I think I want to... What the hell are you doing? Opening up a library here? Probably both. Dan Jock's poster. That's how you get a little stuck in traffic at 400 <laughs> magazines to read. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. No hit and miss, right? If this is a hot air... Well, I already built one. Uh, but this one is piston a, hot air engine. Yeah, and I built a two piston hot air engine, which is the normal kind. This uses just one piston, though. How does that work? Can carefully. <laughs> Are we, are we out of tune pipes and four strokes? We're going into hot air? Is that what's going on here? That's the dream, a hit and miss stun engine. Oh, yeah. The air, all right, you heat up, you heat up air in this chamber, which expands, pushes the piston back. Then as the piston comes back up, it pushes that air into the chamber, and it kind of goes around to the cold end and cools off and then sucks the piston up. Jeez. The weird thing is, is when you watch one of these run at like a thousand RPM. It works. Yeah. Wow. You don't need to cool it off all the way, you just need a temperature difference. Yeah. They put out like no power. <laughs> I got a lot of engines on I'm, like that. <laughs> I got a whole drawer I mean up. like no power. <laughs> I think they're running on hot air. <laughs> the old Sterling engines, they used, to, they used to use a lot of them out in the oil fields. Uh, big ones to run generators and stuff, and you just sink a pipe into the ground, apparently, and then light the natural gas on fire. It was free energy. <laughs> yeah. So it had that. its purpose, but... You Back, now this is Mike Acella, who's got oh. a bunch of videos, too, of Ab Russian, that we're going to be able to uh, confiscate from him very soon. Here's the... Some guy does an airplane in here. A model plane? Yeah, model RC model plane. Yeah, they spend money like it's water. It's unbelievable. He says in here you can get from $25,000 to $8,000 for a paint job with this. Oh, I don't doubt it. It's in here somewhere. There it is. Page 62.
Here. You bought the videos too to go with this? Well, there's no video for this particular paint job. Oh, okay. Oh, oh yeah, sure. that's does nice. Planets and stars. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Solar system stuff and all of this. There was a guy at the Nats had the, had a plane done with solar, you know, with well, I don't know what, like outer space stuff. And then cool. later on in the sidebar somewhere, he talks about how profitable it can be. Back here somewhere. Not in our club. <laughs> you know, start we know, the deck. We know how to make it a loss leader. <laughs> We hit our club, you yeah. starved to death. And there's a neat uh, Union Jack paint job on a little model car. But you, you know, you could do the same kind of flip-flop flame. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. That's like a Brookings thing. Yeah. That Karen has made this an easy decision for me. Because we're going to be doing some craft stuff this afternoon, so I'm not going to be able to stay for the contest, but I'll just get a little feel for what happened here. Looks like they got a reasonable turnout, even though the day looks not so promising. One of, the, one of the really bright spots of uh, this year is seeing Tom Hanser having some really good luck with his four-stroke Cardinal. This has turned into be an exceptional aeroplane. And our good friend Keith Ferguson. Michael was our personal coach this summer, and thank both him and Keith for all the things they've helped us with. Keith has an impact he's working on. He may be coming down to shop soon to do some work on the impact and uh, hang out with us. His employment situation has gone from full time to zero, so we may, we may be seeing a lot of them. We may be seeing more of them than we want to see, in fact, unless he knows how to buy a pizza. Oh, <laughs> Rich is getting his new Stuka ready. You got your Stuka and Sylvia yet, Rich, or not? No, not yet. The new one, no? No, I didn't have time. But I'm going to probably shoot it this week. Hanging? Well, when you get it shot, give me a call. Yeah, I will. Okay. Yeah, I got to go. We're doing full finishing today. You want to fly? Nah. I thought you went there. The video library goes back uh, four or five years. You'll notice that Kyle Freeman is here. After uh, not seeing him for quite a while, we're glad he's back. This will be his first contest in a while. This plane was in a, a near fatal car accident. And you can see where it's been repaired, the middle of the wing. We did that repair in my backyard. If you look back, we have that whole thing on video, if I'm not mistaken. Ryan Manaus Cardinal, which is trimming out to be a really excellent train. He's really had good luck with this. Except for some schmitz in a gas tank that one time we went flying. Always a thrill a minute watching Jim Sumner fly to Trike. A film that I forgot to roll all the way back and the tongue was still hanging out so I went to the air show at Calverton and I thought I got fresh ball film. Shoot, I throw it in the camera, I start clicking away, I go get it developed. It's actually last year's um, uh, Willow Grove. The air show? Air show. And then Middlesex two weeks or a month oh, ago. Oh, okay. So how'd they come out? Double exposed. Here's Danny burning in a flight against <laughs> against against the jet truck. The jet truck and Banjok. This would be a great thing for, for stunt news to cover. Right? Pretty cool, right? Eh? Banjok flies into a truck. And he was burning in a flight. Banjok. Had yeah, Mexican food and he's burning in a fart, it looks like over there. <laughs> That's pretty, well, next we yeah. should try to do this more often. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but look. Yeah. Look at this. Right. They've got a picture of Cooper's plane flying through. That's yeah. really wild. Through. Yeah. Here's Coop. Coop is uh, at Middlesex flying against the Air Force. Thunder you should send some of these in to Tom Morris. It might not come out because of the light. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that yeah, one with... That one looks like it's like a, a thousand feet in the background there, you know, thousands. Yeah, they're burning up the heads here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, where, here's another good shot. Wait. Let me see that one. That one isn't even double exposed. Uh, there you go. Uh, he's he's got a bone. Uh, Jack of bone and the biplanes. Isn't that wild? Oh no, that goes with that set. Coop flying against the Air Force. Wow. This is actually pretty cool. I know. It, it came out as a, as a flute. It is, Danny. Okay. Uh, I want to get some other good shots. Well, there's a hawk that we saw. Uh, well, poop and I don't know, something else. Is you, well, that's yeah, Miss Ashley good. flying into an outhouse or something. <laughs> Whatever that's all about. Uh, that's kind of neat. There it is. Yeah, that's kind of neat. SNJ. Yeah, yeah. Wait, there's one even better. <laughs> you, you almost would think that's a real picture. Yeah. Like on a foggy day right. or something. Right, right. And they're, and they're right. escorting a It's a good thing you're not right? shooting a wedding. Well, here's the bride and that last week's train show at the same time. Can we go that shooting out. into the air show? Yeah. We the Air Force uh, so close. Now you ought to have thought triple exposing them. Get the Thunderbirds, Danny, and a train show. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Save money on film that way. Yeah, right. You couldn't have, I couldn't have done it. Some of it's even centered, you know? Yeah. And, and, um, it, it's, it's just a fluke. So the point is, the worse of a photographer you are, the better, because then they'll all be offset. They will all be in the middle. If I took them, they'd be in the corners, and did you get this one? That one's nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's nice. Did you get an Yeah. I think it was that one. Did you see that? It's very cool. I know, it's just a fluke that I got. What do you got? More, what, what is Warbirds? This, this is yeah, the oh, yeah. This is the air show at Calverton. Oh. That's the good one. Don't do that. Well, I can't. I got. I'm taking pictures, Sabatino. Yeah. Do one by one. Some do one by one. No, I. Yeah. I'm not done here, but there's a jet truck. Roll out in here. With an extra wing. A jet truck or something. A jet motor on that thing, right? Oh yeah. That looks like Banjak's yeah, personal yeah, car. Oh, that has been the one I didn't see. Band now, what do they do with this? They just make a he, pass at a oh, jet engine on? Miles an hour. Oh, look at this. And uh, he's doing a 360. Keep going. This is the sequence. So this goes behind that. Yeah. Keep going. He does a 360 with the extra fuel going in. So he's burning all the smoke, right? And, then, and now you can't see him at all. And then, and then, fortunately, the winds were blowing the other way, so he never came towards us. And then he pops out, and he doesn't know where he's at, but then he goes to the crowd, and toop, 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 and waves, and, and off he goes. And it's got no car engine, it's just got a jet engine? Oh, if you can see. Well, that's practical for those trips to McDonald's. Yeah, right? Here, here's a better well, looking McDonald's with a jet engine in the car. I don't know what size jet engine. Like 810? Yeah, yeah. Look at I don't think it matters. They're all big. Let me show Jack the bone. Yeah, they're sitting the one with the bell. Uh, Aaron? Yeah, that's cool. There you go. Hey, think of that, Rich. I saw these in real life do a 360, like a turn. They turn around like a sports car. You can see these in South Jersey. I have a trailer yeah. down there. I used to buzz over my trailer down yep. in Tuckerton. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's that's nice. He's got some nice, nice uh, warbirds. Warbirds. Yeah. warbirds and the other one. Yeah, nice a Avenger. Mustang, a Mustang and a something else. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, nice Avenger. I went to an air show. Very cool. That is a mean note. Warthog is really mean. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, they, and you photograph on top of the old film. Right. This is wild, right? You see this? They this probably this should never have stopped making them. Because they're this. using them up. <laughs> Isn't this wild? This one. Too. It's a great terrorist school. The wolf the lapa. It's got a lot of the same time. There's another set of pictures you got to look at because it's got a Mustang. And it's in the stunt news. That in a confusing move, Jack of Bone flies into a biplane. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody, oh, you know, everybody oh, would think you really did it because the they know. The biplanes are chasing the Luftwaffe. Really they, <laughs> they know, they know your repentance for doing crazy things. You know, I windy didn't see these on this. This is wild. You yeah, nice set of stuff here. Oh, wait, oh these I didn't see. The, the, the Mustangs, yeah. Let me go through this. So this is Some of these are defective. A P-47, a Stang, nice Mustang. Same with the holes. Some nice pictures. These are nice set of pictures. Oh, that's nice. Invasion stripes. That's a one of these games. That was... That'd be a nice close-up. Yeah, that's a nice first one. So these ones are that. Okay, no, yeah. No, I haven't seen one. 
Get an escort in. Wow. It just happens to be a like, P3 Orion hitting a. Uh, <laughs> also take a remote control. Yeah. Chase, yeah. yeah uh, that's a deep one. Is that school, the AP6s? Yeah. I wonder if they're the ones that skywrite. If that's the ones we see skywriting over the city all the time. I, I double shot oh, over a roll. I, I didn't know it. Didn't know it. They're in this area. So this oh, yeah, that's that. nice. Last year's, this is last year's uh, Willow Grove Tear Show. Okay. And this is Middle Set. <laughs> I just love the sound when there's a, B20, a B17 taxi and radials chugging over. 425, and they're just idling, this sitting there. Blah, 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 blah. That is nice. Yeah. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, geez. We had one fly over the field here while I was flying one day. We ran over and got a picture of him. He's landing down in Essex. You know what nobody ever seems to do? There's a live fire demonstration with one of those things. <laughs> and then he burned it. Rich, you know that one of you with the stuka? I would get an enlargement of that for your shop. That is really a cool picture. I think this is the one where he beat one of you. He burned in a really cool He burned in. Danny burned in a really cool He beat me a lot this year, so. Yeah, that's you. Yeah, there's a picture of Mike's plane in there too, somewhere. Yeah, yeah there's a, plenty of pictures of Mike. Uh, here you go, flying. Right, right. It's formation takeoff with the Air Force. And yours is there. You know, if you knew you were going to do this ahead of time... You wouldn't have came out of school. No, you couldn't plan this. Like, if you planned, I'll get rich on this side, I'll get the no. fun... You'd never get it to Actually, work out. I can do it, but my camera... I have the setup, but the camera doesn't do it, where I have a plate that I put in. Oh, so you... One side. And then move the plate to this side or right, something. you flip it around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Move, you leave it on a tripod, so you can be on two sides of the car going like this. Right, right, right. The camera doesn't back up. It's a... Uh, it looks like a But somebody was telling me you can fake it by you know, re-rolling the film back in. And then counting the pictures. But you don't know where you're at. Nah, nah, and you might be, right. You know, right. It's more fun when it just happens. You're right, right. Max has worked well, yeah. Borrowing a spare pair of pants from Bob Lampione. Yeah, we had a lot of, Kyle. We had a lot of fun years ago. to see him back after all these years. And what had happened is the day he finished his plane, it was a new plane. He was supposed to meet at Middlesex, and basically he never showed up. So we went home, not realizing he had had a car accident, and a pretty serious accident too, and of course in the process wrecked the plane. We managed to put it all back together. And it looks like it still flies pretty good. Nah, I think that's his father that dressed him that way today. Blame the father. I rent them out on alternate weekends. <laughs> Who's responsible for those pants, Pop? Uh, Not me, huh? The military issue, man. Military issue, Lampy owned pants. He joined the Air Force for a military issue now. Military, baby. No, official or parachute. Pararescue. Is pararescue? Yep, airport. Good to see him back. I remember the day we fixed this plane. Yeah. I hope we're not going to be fixing it tonight. <laughs> We got uh, boys 
Diego Cardinal with his sign up last Oh, yeah, you still got that, right? Let's see what that felt like, you know, last minute, stop just in case. You should have seen what Zambelli did to the Red Baron. What do you do? Oh, my God. 2,000 parts. Oh, yeah? <laughs> it's a kick now, huh? Oh, no, it's, <laughs> it's in somebody's dumpster somewhere. Yeah. He even smashed the engine up. It wasn't even his engine, I don't think. General Shamp's engine. Four strokes? Yeah, an 80. Now you want to see a crash that was a thousand pieces. Good. Don't throw this one away. No, I'm gonna take it with you. Oh, I'll, I'll definitely take it with me. And there's a, yeah, I'll check it out later. There's another picture of it. What are you doing? You stealing these from work? Uh, the girl, a woman my, my wife works with is getting them from, I don't know, they're watering them and she's bringing them home. Oh, take all you can get. Hell, yeah, you well, never have too many. You do, so every month. There's the Corsair. Yeah, I know. There is it. The modified. <laughs> Just don't put the jinx and on him. got a can of Rust-Oleum. <laughs> <laughs> we're short a judge. Yeah, we're down a judge here, so we'll stand by. Well, That's sleepy. Good, Excellent. Don't uh, add Tom. Uh, <laughs> spaghetti and meatballs, Daniel. Good job. <laughs> Dan? You guys better learn the meaning of serious stunts. If you put the magazine in front, you get dinner tonight. If you bust that camera, you get dinner for a year. Your choice. Forever. <laughs> oh, that's it for you. <laughs> what the hell is he using? But the, he drilled money. Do you know that's a federal crime? No, it's that. Those are Delaware River Bridge tokens. <laughs> they tripled the tolls and made all the tokens illegal. So that's my... Why not use that for the wheel? <laughs> <laughs> Why have the dumb wheel when you got all these rounds? Okay. Things? Okay, you pros. Five. You're not on, right? No. Not yet.
like you're winding it up, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't have priming solved yet. It's all no. over the place, and I haven't figured it
next up, an expert. This will be the first round, and we're only going to get the first round. Because we're going to be full finishing today. But i got to be honest with you, my wife has made my life so nice in so many ways that when I have to dedicate a day to her like this, it doesn't bother me at all. It's the biggest bargain in the world. And those of you guys out there that have a good modeler's wife, hug her, kiss her. And if she needs a full finishing day, don't be grudge her. Buy her a doll.
Larry Lampion, this is his first, first official. Looks like we might have a little bit of a rich run going here. This is one plane that I think in, let's see, if it was 92, we landed inverted and we had a really, a, a real job getting the canopy back on it and the front goosed up and some pretty good footage on that 92 knots of fixing Bobby's plane if I don't remember right. The Joe Ortiz and Peggy and all the people, you know, Jimmy Varelli, all the people that were in that group at the time. If I was Bob, I'd be wishing I could reach out and make that out. That two clicks leaner. Air at this field, of course, is always variable. It can change from minute to minute. We've even had it rain on one side of the field and not rain on the other at the same time. But Bob is a concourse winner. And the 1969 National Walker Cup winner. And probably uh, easily, if you took a vote among the women, the most popular guy in our area, because he's always flirting with the women. and He has this feeling that they're flirting back, but not so sure, Bob. A wonderful guy, just a load of laughs. The only thing he's really guilty of is he lets Mike Rogers brainwash him. Instead of being a man and deciding where he wants to fly, he has to ask permission from Mike Rogers if he's allowed to come to Jersey and fly with Wendy, so I don't know about that. I've heard from many of his friends he has to ask permission. Can I go fly in New Jersey with the Jersey Boys? Bob, is that true? Actually, the guy you heard from is judging today, see? <laughs> anyway. Oh, I know he rolled my wife is roughly a little more than a year away from full retirement and we will be doing something interesting with our time and life at that point. I'm not sure what, but every time she gets involved in one of these refinishing things or a full finishing or something, she seems more and more drawn to it, more and more excited about the possibility of doing that after she retires. First official.
the time of day we've all waited for. It's Jim Sumner's. Jim Sumner is up next now. We just heard the flight order, and when they announced the flight order, they, they had Jim as the Venetian blind. I don't know if that was respectful to Jim. Or not. Anyway, this plane has two Sato 56s. And I think he's got the single most complicated starting routine of all time, but we're going to see it. And if you see the footage of this on the Nats tape, it's, it's out of control. It's really a lot of fun. Oh, he's got APC props now. Even more dangerous. Let's get serious. <laughs> I, I tried to tell him I'm going to get deep tomato sauce over from that. This is the first time I've ever seen Larry pray in his life. <laughs> What are you going to hold on to, the push rod? Yeah, one finger is fine. Yeah, and then just try to kiss. When I'm by the way fly, try to keep your arms down so I can wiggle the controls a little bit. Oh, you want to wiggle this? Yeah, I'll wiggle it just a little bit. Am I qualified to do this? Now watch this starting routine. Jim, we, we, we've been able to sell some of this video. It's the world's funniest video, but we're not cutting you in on the money. Now, first we got the car battery down, Pat. Two battery clips on one car battery. Oh, oh, this is the glow panel. Oh, the glow drive. Four fuelers. Oh. The nitrous bottle. Like the track oh. shoes. Look oh, at these right shoes. Right. Check these That's shoes the out. Bottom. Highly, highely <laughs> treaded oh, shoes. Yeah. Caught my finger doesn't get caught. You may fly off with me on it. Oh. After this, can I go get coffee? Larry, if you don't get us coffee after this, no more free videos for you. That's it, baby. I tried to tell him I'd get tomato sauce on it, but he didn't want to. I'm going to get fuel in the face. Oh, my I'll be, fat. I'll be cheap fuel in the face. We're going to move on. If the Wright, brothers, the Wright brothers ever saw this, I'll tell you, there would be a lawyer involved. <laughs> You're not going to hit the runway. Uh, Where's the runway? Oh, there it is. Uh, this going to work for you, Larry? I guess so. I'm afraid my finger will get stuck in the wrong hole here. I know. Indeed. Not here. There. Oh man, this is unbelievable. No, unbelievable. I don't believe it. I know, I don't believe two exhausts can hit you right in the nose. They're right there. <laughs> oh yeah, you're gonna be a Greek you're gonna be an Italian when this is over. Oh boy. <laughs> you're already an Italian. <laughs> I think they want me to jump in the pool while they're pumps. Hey, Brian, he wants you to come and start the motors. Hey, dudes. Ready, dudes. Oh, my God. Are they loud? Do I need earplugs? Definitely. Ready. Wait, wipe the props off. They go faster. Oh. Okay, now let's see. Is everything right now? Yeah. Got the car battery on. APC is on. How close is he coming to the fence? Everybody's the right brothers today. Is 
that the wave of the future? Or I don't know. How do you judge the six foot altitude, the mid wing, the top wing, or the bottom wing? If you're upside down, do you fly lower than upside down? What I don't know is how do you judge it? You're, you're round, you can't, there's no body to judge it. Larry, that's what's fun about our event. Reality never enters into the world of control line stunts. That's for sure. Looks like a bunch of spare wings flying around. Remember, the whole idea of this event is it's subjective. There's no way to measure success or failure. Luckily for me. And he's got two tails going up and down. There's two elevators, right? Right. And lots of oil to coat the launcher. Yeah, you need a shower, Larry. <laughs> yeah. You need a breath mint after launching this thing. I bet it's easier to launch the B-25. I wish you used fermented grape juice and olive oil. <laughs> and matching car mats. You could at least get some cream-colored car mats. The fact that the mats don't coordinate is really not good. on one engine now and they're all screaming to him that it's out of control or something. Oh, he going. built the take oh, off. Oh, he better get on that pad or he's going to hit the flagpole. Could be exciting, ladies and gentlemen. You never know when no, Jim not Summers... They're 70. They're only 69 feet. Oh, okay. Well, I don't want to lose one or two wings, so it'll still fly. But the wings are six feet long. He's going into the pole. Look at where the judges... The judges are going to be in the next town pretty soon. What is this, advanced over here? How do I pick it up? Thank God. Hey! Praise the Lord! Thank God it's over! Thank <laughs> you.
Jack, it's tough to follow the Venetian blind act, I'll tell you. First you gotta find the judges who are hiding in trees or something. Hiding under mantle covers. Go out there and see where they're... He got blown out of the vertical lane and get over it. And the guy who recovered it finally got it back. He kept on going to try to do a pass. He did the first one. He did the first one. He did the first one. Well, it warms up. I think it warms up. You know, just hot. You don't try to touch. You know, it doesn't turn up. Come down. 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 Come
Ferguson first official.
Oh, so you got the whole day. Basically, yeah, I got off that one, yeah. So maybe you can come over and help us paint. I mean, why should you enjoy the day and I don't? Boy, that's a lot up here. Dan, I think we should have a combat match to the death, the two World War I planes. Oh, let us not get hasty. Yes. <laughs> yes. I hey, see a combat match to the death. Hey, would this be, is incredible. Would it be tacky if I entered this in one scale? No, we only got two yeah, entries. Absolutely. And who's more fun than you, Jim? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on, let's face it. Look, look, Venetian Ted. blinds are going out of style. Ted and I are working on some stuffed up stage, but it ain't easy, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think if you flew them both at the same time, it'd be a lock. This and the flight streak? Oh, yeah. Oh. I still would love if those guys brought the ringmaster out. I remember oh, we were talking yeah. about that. Hey, you know it would be nice when these get a little raggy. Maybe <laughs> when break. they get a little raggy? <laughs> Where the hell are you been? <laughs> hey. <laughs> Cool wheels. I know. Old, old, um, the guy's uh, getting a headache from hanging upside down. My <laughs> talking out of the wrong side of my. That with no streamers, just yeah, go mama, for it. Have you have two or three of these, don't you? You got that other red one? Years ago. Don't you, Jim? Don't you have another one? Yeah, I got I'll one. fly it. You got it with you? No. I'll fly yeah. the other one. I'll be the decoy. Yeah, so yeah. Banjock will be thinking about me, and you can sneak up on him and grab yeah, you're him. You're going the aggressive. You're going aggressive this time. <laughs> I like the guy. Where did you get the guy? That's, uh, that's, uh, carved him out of styrofoam? That's, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's funny with his head, but once he looks like he's like, <laughs> that ain't what I'm seeing. I don't yet. think what I want to see. He's writing his will. <laughs> that's Phil Granderson, but I call him Buster. You know, I might still want him. Maybe it's a little quieter or less than fighting. Larry said he was getting an oil bath lunch and a thing. Jim, what are those booms made out of? Hardwood? Balsa. Oh. I shouldn't ask. Why would we use hardwood when we have balsa available? I made some that were smaller than that. Yeah. And, you know, I put them on, I stuck them on the floor and held it and whittled this end back and it seemed to have pretty good strength. But I chickened out and I went to these little bit thicker ones. Yeah, yeah. But, hey, they got plenty. You know, they got, they got plenty of duke, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, if you were born a hundred years early, you would have beat Orville right to the, to the local <laughs> bar. Orville would have been over your house every night. There they the are. Night. They're out then. starting the right flyer, and there's Jim comes over. Wow. And loops. <laughs> <laughs> put your fingers around the back. Just put your fingers oh, on the back. Wait, yeah, like, like that. Well, let go. Yeah, just put your fingers. Just your fingers. I don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Any place. Yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look how full this is. Plenty of them. I'm saying dope. They usually pull test the bell cranks, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to clue you in on that. I don't. I don't know if he's been to the same the same engineering school I've been. The pull test seminar. He missed that. Pull test seminar. Jim was in church when I had the seminar. What do you have all together? You have an idea. 1903. I designed it to be 1903, like the right flyer. You know, the year it was started. I should have never asked. I should have thought of that. Sure, can't you tell? It's got the same amount of wings, it's the same got, amount of tail, well, same it's amount got of motors. Stab areas, we have wing area. <laughs> that's amazing. That's it's always fun having something different, though, isn't it, Jim? You never want to just be a Chevy at the Chevy dealer. You just got to pull in in an Edsel. <laughs> Like I was telling uh, uh, what they call jack banners, and you're not going to see a second one of them out no. here. <laughs> you don't have to worry. Like you pull in a parking lot, and there's another one. Yeah. Same yeah. color too. Yeah, I'm working on this. <laughs> hush, hush. I hope nobody else shows up on these for the. Oh, let me let me get my airplane. Fire up. Okay. Okay. Jack will probably help, but I need three people in front of the car. <laughs> You're not going to fly the two tripes at once? <laughs> That'll be five wings in the air at once. Five wings, three stops, three runners. Eight. And we'll have Larry Scarinzi launch them both at the same time. <laughs> yeah, he can fly them both at the same time. 
This is realistic, isn't it? I mean, just picture, can you picture an F4 Phantom doing this over the water? I'm not so sure this is the way they <laughs> really do it. I'm not so sure they need a reality check in this event. And that's supposed to never exceed 45 degrees. Yeah, now tell me, tell, where the hell's the reality in this event? They, they get four warnings and then... They get four warnings? I mean, at the fourth one they're out, but they get three warnings and then the fourth one they disqualify. Man, they have taken this event and turned it into something it's not, or it wasn't. When I was a kid, we loved Carrier. Yeah, I'm not sure. Standard Carrier approach during World War II. Dan, is this anything like 45 degrees here? Tell me. Or am I blind? What are we talking about here? Depends if you're at the match or not. Wow. Uh, oh, 60. 60 is the Which way? 60 from vertical or 60 from horizontal? Horizontal. Well, I was thinking of just, uh, you know, have one tank and maybe a T. My man says, put one tank in it. How would I work that without electronics? Yes, Paul Walker, he does it. Wow. He has a soda bottle in the middle of the bomber. Oh, with, with air in it? Uh, with air pressure, pressure yeah. Oh, and then a pressure regulator at every motor. Looks oh, like he's landed oh, on Danny's head. Technical. Yeah, how does he start it without the fuel going into what he got the, the plugs it up or something? Yeah, no, he's got a little shut off thing on each oh. motor. So it seems like when, when you turn that, that new motor on to start, then it automatically changes the pressure for your first engine, right? Yeah. Now we'd be treated so to like a real biplane flight. When it's, it's run a little rich with one engine running, when you open up that clamp, it would perhaps richen it up here. Because now you got the fuel working out of, of two areas. Oh, the leaves are turning yellow and pink and red and blue. The biplanes are ready to fly to pusher bipes. Dan Banjot. First official in scale.
Come new maneuver, the lazy eight. Hey, Danny! <laughs> Danny is saying, was I supposed to do that? Going for the low inverted flight option here. Helping Mike Kajeski motograph. Oh! Lower! Lower! What a coward! What a coward! Grass stains, grass stains. Yes, sissy. Be happy that I got that on video, man. You look great. Yeah. <laughs> You look like uh, Jason Kidd ducking from a punch, man. Right? Did the plane get hurt bad or? Uh, well, it's in big pieces. Well, I mean, yeah, that never yeah, stopped me. Intact. Yeah, Most you didn't. The body is intact. Boy, that looked like it was chasing you, though. Yeah. That looked like an ex-wife looking for her check, you know. <laughs> you actually got that, Wendy? I got it. And I can play it in slow motion at any club meeting. Roy, I, I may be making several copies for Mary and Peabody of just that event. Yeah, okay. Of course, for a few bucks, that tape could just fall out of the camera on the way home. You know, I just figured I'd taxi it around. Yeah, I know. I guess now you don't think that way. <laughs> Let it stand there. All right. Man's plane. You going to fly this? All right, when are you up in the order? Whenever I get it ready. <laughs> <laughs> right the table. At least I know we'll see some excitement one way or the other. Oh, you'll Not hear. like these silversmith things where you just fall asleep out there. You'll hear them. I want to see some excitement. Well, this is like a good laxative. <laughs> yeah. <a> regularity. Regularity. <laughs> That's what I, I yep. promote regularity on you. I'm surprised. Got the twin engine carrier ship running now. The downwind having a coffee here. Dave King. One of the serious carrier enthusiasts from our area. The Royal Air Force here. You don't see a lot of twin engine carrier ships. They are exciting though when you see one. Yeah, <laughs> 
This is a true story. Dave had some medical problems on our field, serious medical problems, and uh, was rescued by one of the other modelers, I don't remember his name, saved, and glad to see he's back in good health, flying carrier. Step on this is John Duncan is going to, these plug onto the wing. It's not cored out yet, but it's sheeted and glassed. These, there's two more in here. See, these are already glassed. Now, once they get cored out, the panels are typically within a gram of being three ounces. And a typical foam wing that size is about four and a half. So it's a nice saving, but for our electric plane, we have one, we made seven of these wings. Two are done, two are experimental. Les has one with gear blocks. I have one that's for the electric plane, and we have one for our friend Elliot in, uh, in England. But he's coming to America, so we're not gonna send him the wing. <laughs> But these, when they're done, they, I don't have one that's done. I, I didn't bother bringing it because we were going to, if we saw Noel here, we were going to give him the wings. That would have really been nice. But but the trick is in these templates. See how many times we've changed them? Yeah. These curves are real critical because you leave so little foam in, and it's real critical to leave a piece without that piece in the trailing edge. It gets stress right. Swissy. Yeah. But one with the final cuts on these, they're beautiful. They just, they just. And John's going to have these. He's not sending them back to us. So he'll have these for anybody who wants one of these wings, you can buy one. And if you want to make a 60 ship, just add two inches to the panel. It should be real nice. It'll be a nice boon for the event, I hope. They're very easy to do, too. I mean, you, you can't. When you see how easy that is to do, we figured out a lot of little ways to make it easier. It's, and you can, you know, it's not delicate now. Wow. You, you can whack on it. See, that's pretty and it's finished. If you want to fly it this way, that's as fuel proof. I mean, that's how you fuel proof your tank compartment. Right. So any paint you put on is to make it pretty. It's not there to make it, or to add structure, like on an I-beam wing. Right. You know, it's not there to do anything but make it, you can put decals on it. Yeah. So I think it's going to be worth trying. Nice It'll time. be fun. <laughs> Keith Ferguson. I'm not sure where Keith is going to do the maneuvers here. I try to move, but then the wind moved, so let's see if we're downwind. I don't think so. The wind is moving. So we're going to have to go to the other segment of the circle while Keith is in inverted flight. Wind is shifting. Okay, this looks like a little bit downwind. So Keith can kind of critique his own flight. Without repeating myself too many times, I really do want to really thank Michael who came out on a couple of the mornings before the team trials when it was not really fun to be here. It was some miserable mornings and was extremely helpful and has looked at the team trial videos and other videos that uh, show the mistakes that I'm inclined to make on a regular basis. And I think in the future, I think it's fair to say, both Keith and Michael will be instrumental in helping me improve my flying, being more competitive. And I think in a, to a certain degree, I can help them with their building and finishing. So I think it'll be a symbiotic relationship, but, but most of all, it's fun. Both Keith and Michael are fun people to hang around and not, not dipsy doodles, and that's the main thing. Now we could if Keith wanted to, because like I said, Keith is going to have some spare time now. Uh, we could be setting up a tripod here and doing... For Keith, I don't have the tripod with me. But when we get together for a flying session, we can record... I'm sure 
see Akif will kick out the errors from this angle. Now the first thing I see is on a flight like this, and I'll just be the coach in reverse, I've seen a lot of what I call over controls where it's a more than a 90 degree turn. And usually that's an indicator of one of several things. The most obvious, the handle being too big. If you make the handle just a little bit smaller, that usually helps cure that. Or what a lot of people choose to do is add nose weight, but then that really tends to soften the performance of the plane. See, now that was an over control. When it comes around, and that's usually from the handle being one notch or two, too large. And I've seen a lot of people, Brian, Joe Adamusco, among others, that just by making the handle smaller, have been able to get rid of that in, in one day of practice. Well, we call it ferreting. When the plane comes out of a maneuver, there's another ferret. It'll come out of a maneuver and then go. Usually a lot of that can be the handle or a combination of. On a small plane, you can make the arms longer. Well, on a big plane, when you make the arms longer, it gets hard to turn the plane. So you want to be careful you don't get you don't confuse. There's two sets of technology, one for smaller planes. A plane this size, the arms don't seem to be a big detriment. But on a big plane, a plane maybe over 50 ounces, that can be a killer. Again, my feeling is on this plane, maybe a half ounce of nose weight and a smaller handle would be the first two things I'd be inclined to try. And because it has a fox, you know, you, you don't want to load the shaft up with giant amounts of nose weight, but you do want to trim the plane out. And we're going to be doing that with Keith in the future. I think we're going to be doing some tripod stuff because Keith has an excellent eye. He's always willing to help, always willing to share, and I think we'll make a good team in the future. Now, to Dave King's credit, the only carrier model that flew like an airplane instead of a, a helicopter. The only model I'm impressed with here, Dave, the twin. Very cool. But we're going to leave this and go back to the stun event. You guys are being fair about this judging thing, huh? You're not screwing him because he's Peabody, huh? <laughs> to the high bidder. Screw him anyway, he's Peabody. <laughs> hey Rich, I'd be re-adding these scores if I were you. <laughs> Here's what you call a field adjustment. A little bit of stun history here. This is one of the original, If unless he's, this is not the right plane and I'm not remembering it well. This is Rudy Rybeck's Brodak Cardinal that was built from the original drawings before there ever was a kit and before we ever had ours done, the yellow one. This one was finished and flown and it's a little bit lighter than the yellow one, which I thought was about the right weight, but this one is lighter. And uh, not sure what motor, maybe he's, maybe he's got a Brodak 40 on, I didn't even notice from here. But Rudy was one of the original people. He was actually the first one to physically fly one of the Brodak Cardinals. Well, they were still Windy Cardinals, so. Very cool, and it's still flying. I guess that says something. Original one, right? Okay, see? Good memory I have. Good thing I'm not a brain surgeon. I got to fly this once, and uh, it flew a little nicer than mine, but... Uh, Again, in this field with the air turbulence, it's six of one, half a dozen of another.
Woody Midgley, just thinking of the stunt history, Woody Midgley also had his fly in before mine, and he had a Tiger 46 on his. And when I flew that, I said, ooh, that was a nice combination. He flew that out in Massachusetts. technique here by his evil twin brother Dwayne. I think he's got just too rich of a run here, and the wind is getting shifty. Yeah, the wind's short. You can see the trees blowing in the back. I'm going to try to go through one of Keith's flights with a, a little critique. Maybe some, some thoughts that will help Keith in the, uh, the near future. Again, it's hard to evaluate things because the air at this point in the day, and we're going to be leaving very soon. We go into full finish heaven here. Now, I promised Karen I'd be there by one o'clock, but I probably be more like 1:30 by the time I get there. And what happens if I fly a contest and then go to do work on a ladder? I'm dead the next day. Not gonna work. Hard enough shooting a video. Now some of the strong points of this plane, it's a proven design. And the motor seems to run exceptionally well. The, the times I've seen it fly, it seems real close to being how I would want it. Tracks nice in the wing over. What we're looking for is little trim things that might be worth trying to see if we can make it better or worse. Motor's coming on and shutting off at just about the right time. I wouldn't be thinking to change too much of that. The tracking in level flight looks a little unstable, but with the air the way it is, it's hard to evaluate it. And you, you would always have to go back and try a half ounce of nose weight, try it with the nose weight and without, shorten the handle up and then put it back. And basically get it to suit your flying style, not just the style of, you know, whoever the, your favorite flyer is to pick from. And what I always look for here is that the motor is breaking equal, same as it did on insides, and that's about right. So you can pretty well figure, forget about the motor now and just concentrate on the flight. Now let's look for overturns. Overturns and underturns. That third corner, this one right here. That corner seems to lay back on an angle, I'm exaggerating. But it would be that third turn could be soft, and that could be a line tension issue. Let's see if it happens here. It only happens on inside. These four are symmetrical. So I'd be thinking, first thing to try here, if you were going to try that correction, is 
quarter ounce of tip weight, eighth of an ounce of tip weight. First turn is too vertical. First one is straight. Not enough turn and way too much. We're just coaching this guy to just sort of teach them to. And this is what you should be doing when you're working with somebody. Intersections right on the middle of the tree. My feeling is they could be stretched out a bit. They're kind of like eggs standing on end. But when we get a tripod going for Keith, that'll be a big help. I'm counting a lot of overturns here. Where the tail is wagging, there's a nice bottom. Again, that's, a, that's something you try to get is like a fit of shoes. You try to get it to fit you. Now, if somebody else were to pick up this handle, it might be perfect for them, but not perfect for Keith. Oop. Probably hit some bad air there. In the last minute or so, the air has really gotten terrible. I can feel it on my back. I can feel it because I'm leaning on a flagpole trying to stabilize the camera. And it's beating me up. The ship looks nice overhead like it has good tension. Let's look at the geometry on the four-leaf. Yeah, so some of the things I still feel, possibly an eighth ounce, quarter ounce more tip weight, possibly. Possibly a little shorter handle or maybe a little bit longer arms. And you can always glue little plywood extensions on the end. Another thing might be worth trying is just a little bit more motor offset. Because on those inside turns on the second and third corner, it looks like it's getting soft on tension, but I really couldn't tell unless I flew the plane. But just some thoughts, things that might be worth trying. And we're going to be working with Keith in the future, that's for sure. I don't see why that looks more than 60 degrees. But <laughs> ah, hey, guys, it's a local contest, and I'm not a judge, so read them and read. Easy to talk when you're not the guy flying a plane, I guess. So when I used to fly carry, it was all McCoy 60s. The planes had to be scale. And high speed was really high, and low speed was really low. The low speed sometimes was almost as fast. Oh, yeah. I'm glad I'm not a judge in this event. I just like Dave King's twin. I'll give him the appearance points, and that's it. And he landed it. That was so cool. Well, yeah, they also have a helicopter event. The hell with airplanes. Make a Navy helicopter event. And Jack can do this with his biplane. Oh yeah, that's not 60 degrees. No way.
I've just become a carrier expert in the last 30 seconds. Now, I hope we're going to be able to stay around long enough to see Dave King's second flight, but first off, I made a promise. Very cool. When are you going to fly to 60 ships, or have they already been flown? Uh, we're, uh, we're, we're coming up on that. I want to see some real action here. You're probably not old enough to remember McCoy 60s with razor blades in the exhaust pipe. No. The Deer Park Carrier Club. No. Dave, are folding props legal in this event? Oh, yeah. <laughs> new design. There's a new design, a low drag on, on low RPM. Hey Dave, would it be legal if you just shut the outboard engine off or something? It's got to both be running, huh? Both of the engines have to run through a low speed. Oh man. You guys got to rewrite these rules. Who wrote these rules? Hey, I didn't write them. Man, I, this would be the new event, Wendy's Carrier event. The anything goes rules. You know what that is, of course. Yeah, of course. What is it? Sea Hornet. Oh, uh, you're too smart. Yeah, see, I know more than you don't. You think you're two dealing with some schmo here. <laughs> Yeah, I'm hip. With Super Tiger carburetors on it. Sweet engines. The last carrier ship I made had a McCoy 60. It was a man's event back then. No helicopters. Hold the stopwatch. Yeah, he's got his own special stopwatch. Use my watch when I fly. Hey, we need some ju some some judges and stunt. Are you available? You sound like you got the right criteria. Him and Peabody judging, can you imagine? Oh my god. Oh my god. See these engines in carrier, they turn the other way. They put reverse turning crankshafts on them so the torque is pulling a plane away from them. Not sure what that's all about. Counter rotating helicopter blades here. Ooh, that hurts just thinking about. It. Oh, ouch. As we're in the middle of this, it's starting to rain, so this may be the end of our day. Maybe that we're going to get home earlier than Karen expected. The raindrops keep falling on my head. Yeah. We got a half a day in here before the rains came anyway. And it's off to Faux Finishville. For the Miss Ashley stunt team. And even a half a day at the field is better than no day at all. is coming baby just in the nick of time we're leaving good morning had a great morning here this is the kids house this is where they're doing a full finishing I hear them giggling and laughing I hear giggling and laughing in there Come on up, I want to see that faux finish. I want to see it right now. I'm giving up a great flying day for this faux finish, you know. Stun heaven. Supervisor, hey, are the girls having a good time faux finishing? Oh my God, faux finishing. He's locked out of the bedroom. He's locked, he's like me, he's locked out. They're not allowed to see him faux finish. Come on, Ching inspector. Full finishing patrol. Oh, Rob, cool. Okay. Oh, man, you got him trained. No. Wow, that is fabulous. Look at this. That camera has to be off. The camera come out. Never. This camera records history as it really is. That looks great. All that spackling looks great, Rob. We haven't gotten to this part yet. 
Well, so oh, looking at the spackle. Six of the same model. Six of what? Got six of the same camera. I guess we break that one. Yeah. Got six more. I got another one in the car in case this one breaks. Wow, you guys are ragging it up. I'm loving it. Oh, we're going around this way? Oh, Stacy said. Okay, Stacy said. This is some life, isn't it? Where is that here? Here from California. I thought Chris was going to help you. Uh, no? Nah? No, this isn't this. It would have been her finish that you would have helped with. Okay. We've got a tie her now. It's our finish. It's the Roberto finish. Ernie That's looking good. Eight yard gain as Sam Coward comes on the stop and a first down for the first possession of the afternoon. Oh, help you get the air conditioner out of the way? I wasn't asked him. Could he do that for me? Sure. Help me carry We're going to come back. We're going to go do the headboard. Put the gold leaf on a headboard and come back here. We'll, we'll help you with this. Help me carry the AC into the garage? Yeah, no problem. No problem. And decide, uh, uh, I want to see this room finished before the well, Jets lose another game. Get this. Finished before the Yankees. What time's the Yankees? No, that's third. raining up there. They're not going to have a game today. Oh, really? It's raining. It was raining all through the Giants game. Maybe the game be canceled. Well, it doesn't matter. Maybe go get it, baby. All right, so if you let us, hey, listen, if you let us watch the Yankees tonight on a big screen TV, I'll order a pizza pie. You got it, huh? I'll order the pie. I'll pay for the pie. Come on in, Murphy. No, don't let it Murphy, get out of here. Look at the leaves turning colors here. Part two of our craft day. Hey, look who's out here helping us. The job should go quickly with him supervising. You ready to put the gold leaf on? I'm doing a little bit. The stuff that Karen uses is called rub and buff. And it makes like an antique finish, antique gold finish. And she is the master of it. I wish we could figure out a way to rub and buff planes, Karen. Then you'd really have some something to brag about. I think that'll do it. Oh man. Well, Karen worked the dark on her little project, but would you pay for this? Three dollars? Five dollars? Five. Okay, so for five dollars and a couple of coats of paint once we get this installed once we get this installed and uh, I love our lovely Elliot this is gonna be an Elliot's Elliot's bedroom nice and feminine looking for him too it's the guest room guest room yeah that looks pretty good I think that'll be fine okay let's go see how the bed looks installed after all this work that lovely Karen put into this bed let's see how it looks when it's done we give up a contest for a bed. I don't know if that's a good deal. So all of Karen's hard work. Here's the final result. In one of our guest bedrooms. Thought you'd enjoy seeing that, especially if the, the poor wives of the modelers that have to look at these videos over and over again. <laughs> wow. Anyway, one more of just one more of the many restoration projects that Karen has done that make our house a home. One of the mirrors that we restored years ago. We try to keep these things looking in keeping with the house. This is a hundred year old house and keep the finishes antique and the way they would look if these were the real mirrors and things that came with the house. Something I bet you like. This is called Party Dolly. This is one of the dolls I bought Karen. Read the note. Dear Wendy, I love you. Let's party. <laughs> one of our favorite dolls. And she has her own little dishes and her own little friends and everything. And they are everywhere. And they have accessories. They have everything a doll could ever want to be happy except the B-25. I think these dolls need a few B-25s. I guess if you go back in the videos long enough, you remember when we restored this fire piece, fireplace piece. All that Karen actually made from scratch. She painted the face, painted what, the eyelashes too? I painted, I 
I poured the mold. I painted. Poured the mold. The mold. Oh, how look at this nice little. And I painted the eyebrows and eyelashes. Very cute. So I guess bathroom with what else? More dolls. And we have certainly enjoyed over the last 12 years restoring a lot of the parts of this house and trying to keep it original like a hundred year old house would be. The moldings and the wallpaper designs and most of all of course the dollies. So I hope you've enjoyed sharing our little craft projects. The great contest. We call him Train Dolly. He's got his own little wooden train. Aaron's birthday doll. This is the male doll, the one we got from the last, I guess, two or three Brodacks ago. Specially made for Karen by one of the women that lives out by Buzz. Now it's nice to have all these model planes in the cellar and in the attic and the trains and everything, but one of the things we really, we really are proud of when people come to our home is the work we've done restoring this old house. This house was really in, in pathetic shape when we bought it, and we have put literally thousands of hours into restoring things. But we do it together and we enjoy every minute of it. You can imagine even <laughs> Even over the china closets, more dolls. So the only thing that works in my favor here is when, when Karen says, do you really need another model plane? You know, I say, well, do you, Miss Honey, do you really need another doll? Well, I'm not sure, I think we both do. So our friends, the birds that keep us company at breakfast, lunch, and supper every day of the year.